He is my protector, my sustainer. He watches over me. He looks out for my welfare, right? He protects me and he comforts me. The Lord is my shepherd. Well, welcome back everybody. Welcome to another Bible study right here at Kingdom Rock Family Worship Center. I'm excited that you decided to join me once again. We're in our new studio today and we are enjoying Jesus. Thank you so much for being a part of our services every single week. We are endeavoring to dive into God's rich word to develop a more intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. In these times in which we're living in right now, we need that more than ever. Trouble is a raging around every corner, it seems like. But you know what? There is peace in Christ and there is victory in his word. We just need to focus on Christ and we'll see it happen. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Wherever you, wherever you are listening or watching us from all around the world, we want you to know that we're praying for you and we love you guys so much. Well, we're going to start a brand new series here and uh, it's going to be on Psalm 90, not Psalm 91, Lord, we were just there. It's going to be on Psalm 23. So on that note, if you haven't heard our last series on Psalm 91, make sure that you hear it. It was entitled, God Protect Us. Psalm 91 had 16 glorious verses and we went through all of them and it concluded last week. And I pray that you are so blessed. You can go to our website at kingdomrock.org and you can check those videos out and so much more. But all right, let's go ahead and get into Psalm 23. Psalm 23 has six glorious verses, and I look forward to going through all of these with you. So thank you for joining me on this journey. Let's go ahead and read it. Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Lamb of God. I look forward to getting in all of that with you. This is going to be so exciting. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now, as we get into Psalm 23, first of all, I want to encourage you. Once again, there are a lot of things happening today. And I know the Lord wants me to tell you that you should not be distracted. There's so much going on in the media, so much going on about politics, and people are angry, they're upset, they're frightened. You don't need to be distracted. You know, before all this happened, souls still need to be saved. People still needed Christ Jesus. And even now, there are more things that people are dying from than just the virus. They still need hope. Suicide rate is still up. People still need Christ. And if everybody's fighting about who's the president and, and who's not the president, who won and, and who lost, if everybody's fighting about that, who's tending to the lost? Who's following the will of Christ? Jesus is coming soon and we don't need to be distracted. This is the hour of salt and light. God wants you to be the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. And if we're all distracted, what happens to the ungodly? What happens to those who have no hope? So let's get back on the main thing. Let's focus on Christ Jesus and let's see tremendous victory. Amen. All right. All right. Psalm 91. Lord, I said it again. So you're going to have to hear Psalm 91. All right. Psalm 23 verse one says again, 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, there's so much to this one verse. It's probably going to take all of this time and then some of the next time. Because the whole tone of Psalm 23 really takes its view from the word shepherd. Who is this shepherd? It says, the Lord is my shepherd. Who is this shepherd? Understanding the shepherd and the role of the shepherd will help you to understand the rest of the text here in Psalm 23. Well, look, I said it correctly that time, right? Understanding the text will help you to understand it. Understanding who the shepherd is will, under, will help you understand it. Now, so we're going to look at that. What are the primary roles of a shepherd? Well, there are several that we can uh, look at. One, a shepherd tends to the welfare of his flock. Two, a shepherd protects his flock. He watches over the flock. Three, a shepherd tends to or watches over the health of his flock, right? So if we just go with those three basic, he watches over the welfare. Well, how they're doing, of course, and uh, as, as far as how they're doing, of course, it does have to, have to do with their physical well-being and security well-being. So really the whole thing is in the welfare, but let's just break down the word, word welfare. So it talks about their protection, Shepherd is going to guard the sheep uh, against wolves or other predators. He's going to make sure that they have something to eat. And we see here in Psalm 23, he leads them uh, into green pastures beside the still waters. He protects their health as far even as uh, their mental health and psychological health. You think about it. One of the roles of a shepherd, and we'll see this further on down, is that the shepherd has to anoint the sheep's head with oil. In doing that, what's happening is um, from time to time, flies would try to burrow in or go into the sheep's nose or ears. And when the, and of course that causes massive problems with the sheep. Can you imagine something burrowing in your ear and up your nose? And of course the sheep don't have hands, so they're not, so what would a sheep would do to try to find relief is to butt their head up against a rock or butt their head up against a tree to try to get this pain to go away. Well, what does the shepherd do? The shepherd anoints the sheep with oil as a special uh, mixture. And the shepherd puts that oil on the sheep's head. And what does it do? It keeps the flies away. It's like pest control. And so that special oil keeps the flies out. As we're there, Flies are often, uh, often viewed or can be seen as, somebody knows it, demons, right? Demons. And demons try to get up our noses and try to get up our ears and try to get in our head, basically. Demons try to get in your head, try to get in your thinking. Well, that fresh anointing oil that comes from the shepherd protects you from all that, keeps the demons away. So, first of all, let's just praise the Lord that he is our shepherd you know, and he keeps those flies away, those demons away as he anoints us with fresh oil. All right. So there are a lot of things to discover here in Psalm uh, 23. I'm just so excited. I can dance. As a matter of fact, yes. Come on. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Praise break. Praise break. I'm excited. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, sir. Doing a great job, sir. High five. All right. Praise God. So, all right. We're going to see a lot here in Psalm 23. So let's go back to verse number one again. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I can't wait to get to the I shall not want part. That's exciting. But let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the first part. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, notice it starts with the not a Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's do a little bit of research to find out um, about the word Lord here. The Lord is shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. So right, the word my denotes uh, possession, right? He's mine. I'm his. He's mine. And 
as it says, the Lord is my shepherd also means this. So right, there's a distinction there. There's also other shepherds or others who claim to be shepherds. But no, the psalmist says here, the Lord is my shepherd. He is my protector, my sustainer. He watches over me. He looks out for my welfare, right? He protects me and he comforts me. The Lord is my shepherd. Have you chosen him to be your shepherd today? Glory to God. The Lord is my shepherd. Let's look at that word or the term the Lord for a few minutes. Where does it first occur in scripture? And does it follow the same pattern as shepherd, as one who oversees, one who protects, one who guides, and one who directs? Does it follow the same pattern? Absolutely. Let's go to the book of Genesis, where we will find the first mention of the term the Lord. Let's look at it. This is so exciting. Genesis uh, chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, let's look at verses 1 through 9. And it says this. Well, let me get it. All right. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Verse four, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In that day that, here it is, the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no, there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And, verse 7, the Lord God for man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul, verse eight, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. And verse nine, we'll stop here. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want you to notice here how over and over it says the Lord God. Now, remember we're, we're in Psalm 23 and the very first part of Psalm 23, verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd. So who is the Lord? Now the word Lord here is interpreted uh, Jehovah, Jehovah. That's what the interpretation is, Jehovah. And Jehovah means the existing one. Now the transliteration, we talked about that before, the transliteration of the word Jehovah is Yahovah. Yahovah. Remember, transliteration talks about how the word would be pronounced in the original language. So not just the translation, which gives you meaning, but the transliteration gives you how the word is actually pronounced. So the actual pronunciation of the word Jehovah is Yahovah. Now, you'll also see the word God. It says the Lord God. The word God there is Elohim, Elohim. And Elohim, this is wonderful here. I'm not making this up. The word Elohim means it's really plural and it's interpreted gods or divine ones. Well, this is a picture already of what we call the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in the beginning, Yehovah, gods, right? Gods, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit began to create everything. The Father, of course, spoke it 
And as he spoke, the word of God came forth. Of course, that's the Lord, that's the Lord Jesus. And the spirit of God hovered. We see this also in Genesis first one hovered above the deep, giving life. The spirit gives life. Jesus said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So we see the father proclaiming it is his will. It is his will. And the son comes forth in the form of the word, the Lord Jesus in the form of the word. And then the spirit hovers over it, giving it life. So we see in the beginning here, it says the Lord or Yehovah God's God's Yehovah Elohim, which means, of course, the Lord God began to make all this stuff. Now, what we see here as it relates to Psalm 23, we see here a very startling picture in the very beginning when we see how Yehovah has made man, what did they do? What did our father, our heavenly father do? Well, he created a paradise for man, right? And now notice how the Lord formed man on the seventh day, on the day when everything was set. He made man, he brought up man, he formed man out of the dust of the earth and he breathed into his nostrils in a place that was already set. He, he wasn't uh, creating um the dust and bringing everything together, uh, everything he was doing, the sun and the moon and the stars and all that, as he did on the first day, second day, third day, fourth day. This is the seventh day. And on the seventh day, after everything is set, he places man right there. Uh, there, were, there was no rain at this point. The father only made uh, a mist to come up from the earth to water the ground because there's no man to till the ground just as, just as yet. So the Lord made man. And in that place and in that day, he also provided trees for him to eat from. So again, one role of a shepherd is to provide. And hasn't the father provided? From the very beginning, the father provided for man. From the very beginning, now, if we go back to Psalm, uh, Psalm 23, we'll, we'll understand this. Now, this is so important. The Lord says here, and rather Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. So the moment we identify God as our shepherd, then we must also identify ourselves as a, as a sheep. That's correct. So that means that we're in a position of complete dependence upon him. Even looking at a natural sheep, a natural sheep does not have fangs. Oh, that's a terrible sight. Sight doesn't, doesn't happen. A natural sheep does not have fangs. It does not have claws. Uh, you know, it doesn't have uh, any way to protect itself. It depends on the shepherd to take care of it, to fend for it, to provide for it. And I don't want to offend anybody, but I'm just going to <laughs> make this plain. A natural sheep. They say, I, no, I'm not a farmer. I haven't been around it. I've just done some research, it myself, some research myself. I have gone to a petting zoo a time or two, but this is what I've heard about sheep. A natural sheep, they say, is dumb. Forgive my language. Uh, is not wise. It will do things, and the shepherd has to go and pull it back in. It will, it will wander off, and the shepherd has to go and, and get the sheep and bring the, bring the sheep back in. So... We are many times now in our own estimation, we may think that we're pretty smart, but in the grand scheme of things, we actually make some pretty dumb, some unwise decisions in our lives. And we need the shepherd to come and get us out of what we've done. Can somebody say amen? All <laughs> right. So we we say, Father, when you say the Lord is my shepherd, when we say uh, Yehovah is my shepherd, He's the one who provides for me, who protects for me, protects me, who watches over me, who keeps me, who guides me, who directs me. You're also saying, Father, I depend upon you. I'm depending upon you for my substance. I'm dependent upon you. Now, that dependence is what got Adam and Adam and Eve in trouble in the very beginning. What am I saying? Because the very fact uh, that when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were saying, I no longer want you uh, to be in charge of me. I will be my own boss. You got that? I no longer want you to be in charge of me. I will be my own boss. I will be like God. I'm going to do it my way. So they didn't want to be dependent upon the father anymore, upon the shepherd, upon Yehovah. 
They wanted to take matters into their own hands. Thus, the situation we're in right now, because man does not know what is best for man. Only Father knows what's best for man. It is pride. It is our pride that gets us into trouble so many times. So as we're going into Psalm 90, uh, Lord, help me one more time. As we're going into Psalm 23, well, come on, give me some grace. We had 10 weeks of Psalm 91. All right. So as we go into Psalm 23, and as we're beginning to close now, we understand that it's talking about a dependent relationship where you are depending, dependent upon him. You know, this is what we do every day when we pray. When you seek God in prayer, you're telling him, Father, I need you. When we cease to pray, in essence, we're saying, I got this. I got this. When we follow the Lord's instructions, we're saying, Lord, I'm dependent upon you. When we cease to follow his instruction, we're saying, I got this. I know what's best. I don't really have to do that. I know what's best for me. And that's an ugly head of pride that rises up. I don't have to give. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to study my Bible. I don't have to do that. Every time we cease to do that, that is what we're saying. I got this. I know what's best for me. And that's an ugly head of pride that rises up. But we have to remember, Father, you are our shepherd. And when we acknowledge him as our shepherd, guess what happens? We begin to see his welfare, his concern for us, his protection, his provision, his guiding. We put ourselves in position to receive from him, right? Remember the Bible says, uh, it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. He resists, resists the proud. He, he wants, now I love that word resist, because that word resist means that I really want that but I'm holding myself back. You ever been on a diet before? You know, you said, I'm not gonna eat any more of that chocolate cake. I'm not gonna eat any more of this and that because I know where it goes. It may go straight to my hips or what have you. I know where it goes, so I'm not gonna eat it. Now, do you cease to like that chocolate cake? When, you know, you cease to like it? No, you still like it, but you're holding yourself back from it because you know what it's doing right? Or know what it would do. Uh, look at that in terms of scripture. The Lord said he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. In other words, the father wants to shower that individual of love. He wants to shower them with care and compassion. He wants to shower them, but he's holding himself back because of that, because of something, because of pride that's in them. If the Lord would release his goodness his full extent of goodness upon their lives, then they would say, hey, look what I did. Look what I did. So Psalm 23, first of all, it talks about that relationship of dependence, how much we need Father, how much we do need him. And we're going to come back to this on next week um, because our time is gone. There's so much more to see here. But I think that today, that's the main thing that I wanted to bring to you how he is our Yehovah. He is the existing one, how he is Elohim. That's the phrase again, the Lord God, Yehovah Elohim. He is Jesus. And we'll understand this, and we'll look at this further on in the text as we go on. Uh, Shepherd, one of the first ways that Jesus identified himself as a sheep. The Bible says that he is the lamb of God. He is the lamb, the young lamb, the tender lamb that came out from among the sheep that gave his life for the rest of us. Hallelujah. So that we may live. And then the Bible also declares that Jesus is the true shepherd, the good shepherd who gives his life for the sheep. This is wonderful. So as we talk about Psalm, uh, Psalm 23, I want you to understand this Psalm, of course, talks about our father, as Jehovah Elohim, the existing one, ever existing one. And it also talks about Jesus, for he is a shepherd and bishop of our souls. He wants to provide for you. He wants to protect you. He wants to hold you in his arms. He wants to guide you into all truth and show you things to come. He wants to be that for you. 
but we can't allow pride to stand in the way and say, I don't need him, when in fact, we all do. So I appreciate you guys for joining me today, and I wanna pray over you before we close this broadcast uh, for our safety and protection in, in these times. And one of the things that we will also see in Psalm 23 as that shepherd, as that, as that um, shepherd and sheep relationship, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. And when the shepherd says, hey, it's time to move, it's time to go, we need to hear that voice and follow. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, I bring to you your beloved that is watching and listening right now from all around the world. Father, I pray that you would bless them, that you would keep them. Lord, I pray that uh, your kindness would be upon them and that you would give them peace and that you would give them rest. I pray for great grace upon them and that they would know Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their lives. Bless your people, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends. Well, that's it for this week. I look forward to being back with you on next week. And maybe next week we will continue uh, to say Psalm 23 and not Psalm 91. So don't forget to join us on our website at kingdomrock.org. That's where you can find this video and so much more. And if you're watching us by way of YouTube, if you found value in this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Uh, and also don't forget to hit that bell notification button so that you may uh, see the next video as it comes along. We'll be here all next week. All right, those of you that are watching on television, stick around because our announcer is going to tell you how you can get today's message and so much more. We love you guys. We look forward to being back with you real soon. Take care.